Hi, I'm Celine Mangan. Um, I'm the practice manager for mine rehabilitation at Greencap. It's another sister company of Decipher under West Farmers. My role generally day to day was assisting um, mining companies with their closure obligations in the most practical and efficient way. For the last I think 18 months or so. I've been working primarily with Decipher in terms of the implementation and development of the um, Decipher Green product. So when I started, I was moving from um, exploration into looking at kind of major projects in the environmental space. Um, brought over it and at the time my boss had, had asked me when an interview of moving over what how would you monitor a waste rock and form um, and I uh, had mentioned about lidar and remote sensing and he laughed at that stage because he's like you know that's just ridiculous it won't happen clearly looked into it and then gave me a call and was like let's go for this and so you know now it's being used and it's used across the industry they're looking at drones and, and lidar and um, how they can monitor landform stability but it wasn't typically used in the environmental space nine ten years ago and um, so we were the first to kind of look at that and it was an innovative um, mine closure monitoring tool and being able to really bring I suppose regulators and internal and external stakeholders on a journey of understanding and visualizing uh, waste rock landforms and seeing that like gullies and erosions of Alvang being able to quantify that time and time again and yeah that's where I suppose that's where we kind of moved and evolved and our way of working I suppose is changing and it's it's good to see the industry in the last kind of decade has come a long way and hence why we're here I suppose at Decipher as well that we've come it's even evolving even more depending on who you ask for right mine rehabilitation can be quite different for some they could think that mine rehabilitation is the movement of materials and from um, a design and construct of a final landform and um, but what I think really mine rehabilitation is is the process of repairing the impacts on uh, the mining uh, site or industry to the environment. From that, bringing that whole evolution of understanding that impact and going forward with that. I believe the mine rehabilitation process should start right from the very beginning, from feasibilities and um, in your approvals phase, right through mine operations and ultimately into um, closure when it's shut down. Mine rehabilitation involves the baseline studies and real understanding of the process of what, the evolution of the landform. Our way of working is continuously changing and if you don't capture all that baseline data, it's quite hard to think about at the very end. Some of the best practice mine rehabilitation methods that I've seen is practitioners and mining companies that are challenging the status quo. MIA from I suppose a point of where we can see where the um, community is going and it's an ever increasing understanding of our environmental awareness and climatic conditions. Um, early engagement of stakeholders, be they internally and externally, and um, from a regulatory point of view, bringing them on the journey and understanding that, unfortunately, the mining industry, even though they may be doing of their best practices or that they can, we've lost a sense of um, a disconnect with the community, and there's becoming a, a distrust and being able to tell communities and being open and showing where areas that have worked and where haven't worked and being able to bring that journey and share the data um, is where I think really the mining companies have come a long way from it. Another additional um, method I think that's been working really well um, for companies of the best practice is being um, early ecosystem function analysis. You need to have an understanding of an ecosystem functioning analysis, so be that trials in the field and in the lab, and to bring it back to what would look undisturbed, ultimately underneath it's being disturbed, so it functions completely different. Another best practice that I've seen is um, using technology and the tools that we have right now to understand and develop the foundations of a landform. Previous practices was in terms of a, a reshaping final landform um, they were just did it and it was constructed to design or as they thought and then you'd wait and see how that evolves and there's going to be obviously a settling period in a final landform but if you don't capture that data at a very early stage and understand has it truly been constructed to design. Once you wait for a, a heavy rainfall event, water is going to find the easiest path and you're going to start with those rills and erosion and gullies um, quite early on and where you could actually avoid that. And then when it comes to that, that material has to be reshaped and reworked again, you could be talking tens of millions of dollars as opposed to something when you've got earthwork contractors on site. But also that foundation of what was truly established can be put into comprehensive um, mathematical models, 
for erosion and landform stability monitoring so we, you can truly show the regulators the, your understanding of where a landform needs to look at in um, perpetuity, that where it is long term that you can look at the evolution over 100 plus years and see that, that functionality of where it's growing and previously we weren't able to do that without technology. So that status quo of moving and taking things on board and changing our way of working. To answer the question of how much mine rehabilitation costs, I feel like it's asking a question of um, how long is a piece of string. But if to put a dollar figure to it, it's in the hundreds of millions of dollars. In a way of working in continuously change and improve and continuous improvement, you can reduce that costs and also bringing, I suppose, the stakeholders on um, on board. Um, you're able to, I suppose, you know, reduce that subjectivity and they can get more confidence and you have an increased social license to operate, but leaving things for the last minute can obviously increase that cost. And, and then long term, you may have to monitor for a lot longer than um, you had if you had brought your stakeholders on a journey at the very beginning. Some of the challenges that are facing the resource industry around mine rehabilitation at the moment include the social license to operate. So there's an ever increasing um, pressure from the regulators and in the general community around environmental awareness and legislation is continuously changing. And without being able to close and show that we've successfully rehabilitated sites, where there'll be an issue that we won't be able to uh, open new sites. And the challenge was is from the very beginning at that feasibility stage, being able to understand whether can you really close it so it's not about the how much money you can make in the commodity even though that's ultimately obviously the a driver in the industry but it's understanding whether if you can't close it you can't mine it it's no longer socially acceptable to leave a site in care and maintenance or even worse abandon the site Mining companies can um, use current technologies and tools to overcome the mi current mine rehabilitation challenges. And these include using um, remote sensing technologies. Gone are the days that we should have enviros continuously out there with rulers monitoring uh, landform evolution where we could look at technologies from um, LiDAR and UAV um, data and to be able to get that capture, that baseline assessment. That technology has been around for quite some time but it's actually how we can actually use that data in terms of that like telling the story and the visualization and being able to bring you know regulators or stakeholders be it internal or external on a journey and understand that comprehensive um, analysis of that landform it comes back to the data being able to have as much data as possible in a in a central area that you're able to t put the pieces of the puzzle together I think decipher being is able to bring all those pieces of a puzzle together so from the very early stages of stakeholder consultation, you have a time-stamped central database that you're able to escalate or even identify and email any stakeholders that you require. Putting it everything together and telling that full story um, is where you can use harness on technologies in a new way of working and quickly monitor your um, it's still requiring from the reporting aspect but being able to quickly generate um, laboratory data go through it in terms of if there's any exceedances, graphing, um, data, data exports from tables and being able to quickly analyse and um, being able to t tell that story. Decipher is helping mining companies um, drive progressive rehab in a holistic approach by bringing all the pieces of the puzzle together to understand that full evolution of the life cycle of a mine site. So it's not thought about right at the very end or it's a tick the box approach. You're showing from a regulatory point of view and from a stakeholder consultation point of view that a mine company is challenging the status quo in that continuous improvement approach. They're evolving their way of working and being able to tell that full story. Being able to have the quantifiable data in a central area that you can um, access, be it in the corporate office, on site, or give access to her from a, a regulatory point of view, or your stakeholders, or your investors, um, and being able to t t tell that story from it and, be, and give them that full evolution. Without it, there's so much subjectivity and you can understand the issues of where the community are unsure this, and the regulators are unsure of whether they should ultimately be signing off or agree to even approvals if you're, don't, if you're not able to tell that full story. So mining companies coming on board, showing that what's, they're taking this from their, their current sites to be able to implement it into right from a new site from exploration right through to the whole phases of feasibility and operations and to closure. So it's thinking outside the box as well that from a, a mining company being able to use that they can show 
that they're evolving with time and their practices are evolving just as the industry is and our awareness for the um, environmental um, sustainability and the different climatic changes that you're able to tell that full story using Decipher.